you won't believe what the University of Chicago discovered about boosting your sleep quality. My name's Leo, licensed mental health counselor, and first, check this out. This is a brain scan during a sleep study done by Boston University in 2019. And what they uncovered reveals a lot about what happens when we sleep. What you see here is a brain, and the red and blue waves here is cerebrospinal fluid. Researchers now understand this to be your brain's natural process in clearing out metabolic waste, clearing out old or dead neurotransmitters and neuromodulators from synaptic clefts. In other words, your brain literally washes itself for its self-care. This is a really big deal for mental health. This research suggests that when a person goes day to day with any level of sleep deprivation, they risk having a buildup of neurotransmitters. Some excessive neurotransmitters, such as glutamate, can contribute to neurotoxicity and emotional dysregulation if left unchecked. This finding matches up well with what Columbia Psychiatry had to say about sleep deprivation. They found that sleep deprivation places a significant burden on your amygdala, a critical area in the limbic system responsible for processing emotions. The Sleep Foundation tags in to say that poor sleep is strongly linked to depression and anxiety. Many more authorities on this say that sleep deprivation is also linked to cardiovascular and metabolic health, memory, productivity, and learning. And I want to share what the University of Chicago discovered, but first, I need to emphasize something critically important. If you're struggling with your mental health and have a hard time sleeping, it's high time to check in with your counselor about creating a sleep hygiene regimen. Sleep hygiene is simply how we prepare for sleep to come to us. Sleep isn't just something you can flip a switch to happen. Sleep instead is like inviting that highly particular bestie to go out to eat. Something you have to invite into your lifestyle by giving them proper notice so that they can plan ahead of time to meet up. And for sleep, there are usually a series of tasks we have to perform on a particular timeline that encourages the rest process to happen when you need it to. I won't go into too much detail on that. I'll leave that to you and your counselor. One idea I will say points to a new piece of research published by the University of Chicago. They found participants who ate more fruits and vegetables throughout their day experience higher levels of sleep quality than their non-vegetable counterparts. Specifically, these participants followed CDC guidelines on dietary recommendations, suggesting five cups of fruits and vegetables a day and reported as high as a 16% improvement in sleep quality within a rapid 24 hours of following the recommendations. So yeah, turns out eating more green beans may help you sleep better, which means I owe my grandmother an apology for avoiding her cooking as a kid. I'm sorry, Granny. Share this with a loved one or save this for someone who struggles with sleep. Comment on what helps you invite more sleep into your lifestyle. And if you've tried to work on your sleep hygiene and came out empty handed, take this with you to therapy.